Hello. Thanks to Nick at Stoic Forge for sending this awesome ring. I'm going to make a matching knife to go with it, and the pair will be auctioned to charity. This ring is pretty sweet. It glows in the dark. They forge some knives and make some other cool rings. So go check out their channel and website. See the links below. I've been making some more chef knives lately, and as you know, the grind has to be pretty thin at the blade or edge in order to get that razor sharpness required in most kitchen cutlery. It's got me wondering, what if I forged the sharpest knife in the world? What would that look like? How thin would the edge have to be? How thin can I make it? I've got this 1084 laying around, and even though there are better steels for kitchen knives, this will be easy to work with, so let's throw caution to the wind and forge the sharpest and thinnest knife I've ever made. When we're done, we'll dress up the handle to match the ring, and then do some sweet, sweet sharpness testing. I'm going to call this a concept knife. To get where we're going, this edge will have to be so thin that it will not be durable or serviceable in the slightest. In other words, the knife will be sharp, but not practically useful. You see, I want no secondary bevel. This is probably sort of a silly thing, but I think it'll be useful. First, I can practice grinding edges thin without burning them, which is necessary for anyone making chef knives. And second, we can examine the relationship between cutting power, a thin edge, and durability. By making something ludicrously thin, perhaps I can learn better the proper thickness and balance needed for making a blade as sharp as possible without really compromising its integrity. It's a fine line, or at least it can be, and I've never known exactly where that is. But I think today we're going to push well beyond it, so maybe we'll get a bird's eye view of it. It's time for thermal cycling. The forging is done, so I'm going to cycle it at 1550 degrees for 10 minutes, then 1500 degrees. Then I'll give it a relaxation cycle at 1100 degrees and let it cool slowly. Now, before I take it to the quench, I'm going to knock off some scale, that gray flaky stuff. I don't want it interfering with the quench. I want the oil exposed just straight to good steel. This won't mess up the normalization cycles or anything like that. I'm not doing enough grinding here to, you know, effectively put stress in the blade or anything like that or cause any warping. Kevin Cashin has a great DVD on heat treating 1084 and it can be done pretty successfully from the forge. You don't need temperature control, so I'm going to do a forge side quench.
Okay, after you finish grinding, you're left with something like this. You haven't sharpened it, but it's ground down very thin. For a chef knife, about 10 to 20 thousandths thick there at the very edge. And that is the edge to which you will apply your secondary bevel and form the cutting edge of the knife with. So you'll come in here and put in a secondary bevel, something like that, with a wider angle. There's other grinds. You can do chisel grinds. In, in the chef world, there's other more complicated grinds for Japanese knives, for example. But this is the idea. You have a slightly wider angle. But I want something like a Scandi where I just go all the way down to zero. So I just have one flat primary bevel on each side. And if you make the spine thin, then you would have an extra sort of sharp angle, narrower angle there at the tip. There'd be less resistance in cutting. But first I have to doctor up the spine here. It's a little bit thicker than it should be for a chef knife. I'm also going to have to draw back the temper. By the way, this was tempered at 390 degrees for an hour and a half twice. But i got to drill some handle holes, and if I soften the spine a little bit, it'll, just, it'll be easier to grind. I won't have to use as many belts or take as much time. I'm going to get the blade all dolled up with blue dicum just so I can make sure that I'm grinding where I want to grind, which is along the spine to thin it out. I've got the spine at the thickness I want, and now I'm going to grind in the middle portion of the blade and push two different grind lines. There's going to be a grind line that's moving slowly towards the spine of the knife and another grind line that's moving towards the edge of the knife. And if I do this correctly, those two grind lines will meet the edge and the spine at the same time. I'll have one full flat grind going the entire length from the spine to the edge. It's pretty thin. I can't really get it much thinner on the grinder. I'm risking burning it, so I have to move to sandpaper. Getting close. We're almost there. So I got this super thin down to where I wanted it, and off camera I went and tried to cut paper. And it cut paper, but man, look what the paper did to it. It put all these warps and deflections and rolls in it and stuff like that. So I got it way too thin. That is just crazy thin. So unfortunately, I am going to have to put in a secondary bevel here because this edge will have no durability, not even enough to do sharpness testing if I don't. I got my black G10 handle shaped up, drilled, and countersunk, ready for the Corby bolts.
There's a nice, simple pattern in the spine and along the grip. I'm going to see if I can fill that up here with some glow-in-the-dark powder like Nick uses for his rings. Here's that ring again, and if I understand correctly, it's a bunch of glow-in-the-dark powder, super glue, and an accelerator to make it more glass-like. I've tried this only once, and I didn't have much success, so we'll just go with the flow here, though. I'm not going to spend too much time with this. This is really, again, sort of a concept knife. It's got a very rough finish anyway, and I don't expect it, you know, to win any awards. <laughs> so we'll just see what we get. Let's turn the lights off. On to the sharpness testing. So when you can cut the hairs without touching your skin and pinning the hair between your skin and the knife, that's called treetop shaving, I guess. And this is push cutting a bunch of paper. probably wondering, hey Steve, you got eight minutes left in this video. You're not going to be cutting paper the entire time. And I'm thinking to myself, no, I'm not. I got a new sharpness tester. I saw it on Perfection's channel and it looks pretty sweet. It's going to bring a little bit of science to our pseudoscience operation here. I'm going to break it out in just a minute, but let's finish up these knife geek sharpness challenges first. The ubiquitous tomato slice does pretty good on this first slice. The second couple, maybe not quite as strong. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm starting to worry here that maybe my knife isn't as sharp as I hoped. So this is a single edge utility razor straight from Home Depot. And as you can see, it should be really sharp, but it's not doing much on this two ply toilet paper. It cuts it a little bit. Here's a shaving razor I liberated from its handle. Very thin, isn't that crazy?
So it does all right, especially at the end. There's a bit of a clean line there. I didn't do it any favors by wrenching it out of its housing there. This is a double-edged razor. This should be the sharpest thing I have in my house. Let's see what it does to toilet paper. Yep, that is freakishly sharp. Yeah, my knife does pretty good. I think it's somewhere between the shaving razor and the double-edged utility razor. Here's what all those blades look like under the microscope. My knife is on the left and it's got some blobs on it. That's oil for keeping the blade oiled. All right, here it is. Here's the magical device. It's a Sharp Electronic Best Certified Sharpness Tester. And basically it comes with this graph to show you how sharp stuff is and you stretch this monofilament across this gap and then you cut it and it, it whole, the whole thing rests on what essentially is a scale I think it weighs the force required to cut the filament in grams and spits that number back to you you have to reload the filament tester every time manually once you get used to it it's not too bad hundred and forty five so according to that graph that's actually pretty sharp for that single edge utility razor here's our double edged razor what thirty five I don't hardly believe that that's so sharp I'm gonna check that again Our shaving razor scores a respectable 45 on its first attempt. It didn't ever repeat that. It wasn't quite that good the rest of the time. I'm going to show you the greatest hits version of my own knife. We'll look at some of the best scores it got. I ran this seven times and I did the other blades five times. We put all those scores together, averaged them, and I'll show you the results here in just a minute. Now this sharpness tester measures in increments of five, so 5, 10, 15, 20. There's a more expensive one that goes in increments of one gram and then a less expensive one that goes in 50 gram increments. All right, these are the results. The single edged razor did 140. Shaving razor 75, double edged utility razor averaged 30. I did some extra testing on the knife there and it averaged about 60 or 62. I was rounding it to fives because that's what the tester tests in, so. What I've made is much closer to a straight razor than it is a chef knife. And I'm wondering where a straight razor would come out here on some testing. Be interesting to see that. I feel like I can get slightly better results, or at least I should be able to. I'm putting some 0.5 micron compound here on a piece of paper on a sharpening stone and then doing some more sort of honing and stropping. And I got some pretty consistent results from 20 to 30 near, you know, the first two thirds of the blade. But at the heel, there's still a spot that comes in around 55 and I even got one, uh, 110 there. So I don't know, that probably has to do with my skills sharpening. A little silly, but a lot of fun. I learned some stuff. I hope you guys did too. Hey, if you want, stick around and you can see me try to split a hair with this.